Hello, season one, episode three, the history of the songs. It is me, Papa Emo. Do you like that, Lex? I like that. Papa Emo, here today to talk to you about track three, which is, do you remember what track three is from Jack Flag? So, no. The Glorious Streets of So, so yeah. All right, I'm not going to incriminate myself in this video because I realised I've done that plenty of times in the past with podcasts and stuff, which is a bit silly, really, you know. But, okay, so, um, back in the days of the Fly Medallions, we thought, me and Christian Jupp, we worked in the post room of a major record label, and um, we were in the Fly Medallions and we used to run riot around Soho, um, you know, Monday to Friday, you know, so we'd work in a record co company in a day, run wild every night, you know, the week weekends were uh, definitely not the cool times, we, it was only like, in our eyes, you know, no one went out on the weekends, people only went out midweek, that was just us back in the day, but um, we were... Um, it was in the post room and it was so poorly paid like I used to earn like when I was 16 I remember my monthly wage was £355 a month amazing and then when I later went back to the record label after managing the skateboard shop I think my yearly wage was £7,100 a year which a year? Is a year which is pretty bad but anyway, we were, um, so you kept us alive. You fed us as we fried our brains, nightly, ever so slightly, but you weren't to know. So what I'm talking about, you kept us alive, yeah? So we worked in a post room and we'd always get the, the things being delivered into the record label, like the... Um, you know, master tapes and this, this and that. And there's this one company called Chop Them Out. And every day when they delivered their master tapes, they'd always deliver all these pastries, like croissants. And me and Christian would literally be starving hungry because obviously we never ate. All we did was spend all our money on booze and drugs. Um, and so the only food we pretty much ever got was um, stealing the croissants of the people who worked in MCA who could afford their own fucking croissants. Yeah. And they used to piss me and Christian off because these fuckers, they got free fucking croissants. We had to bring the croissants up to them and we couldn't fucking afford them because we spent all our money on booze and drugs. So our fucking croissants, yeah? So that's what that first verse is about. But... The irony was as well, so even though, you know, and the poor staff of the, of this major record label, like, we terrified them. I, honestly, looking back now, 30 years later or whatever, we were terrifying these two mad little punks in the, in the post room, just running wild. And we were really, it's a shame now, we blew that opportunity so bad. We were, we were respected. You know, because we was out every night and we were street kids and we was out every night, night we were really respected by, you know, the A&R people and the press people and the promotions people because they knew we were kind of like real, you know, but we just, we we pissed out the wall and we, we were just out of control. We didn't realise actually, you know, if you want to succeed in life, you do actually have to kind of toe the line and we was out... Well, I was out of control. I mean, I, I was out of control. And so so was Christian, really. But, uh, and we was just always broke. Yeah? And I remember we would, I would constantly be poncing fags off of everyone. You know, upstairs, like poor Amanda Brown in the promotions department was always nicking her fags. Poor Maureen Lippman in, in Maureen, she was lovely. She was with my uh, uncle Rod, Rod Cunningham. She worked oh. with Rod. Like, I nicked Maureen's fags. Was like, we were just ponces. We really were. But the irony was, because of our dodgy dealings, 
um, which I won't go into because this is all pure fiction. But because of our dodgy dealings around that time, we were earning lots of money. And uh, yeah, lots and lots of money. And so I spent every night in a hotel in, in London. It was always around Victoria. You know, um, there was lots and lots of really seedy hotels around Victoria Station. And instead of going home from, you know, Soho back down, you know, to Croydon and then to West Wickham or, to, or whatever, I would just spend my nights in hotels. There was always about 50 quid a night. Or I would just pass out on the streets and, and wait, be, get moved on by police in various parks. I remember one time I was walking down Piccadilly just passing the Ritz and I got to Green Park and I was like, oh, I can't be bothered to go home. And this is just my head was, you know, I was kind of just fearless and young and dumb. I went into Green Park. It was summer and there was all the deck chairs, chairs chained up. And I, I remember I made a little house out of the deck chairs. Like I made, <laughs> pulled a few of them out and I made a little camp, you know, and I went to sleep in my little deck chair cocoon and then at like three in the morning there's torches and the police are there waking me up. You know, you can't, you can't sleep here, mate. I was like, okay. No, I didn't bat an eyelid, it's funny. I, you know, when you're just like that, living in that world, it just seems so normal to make a house of deck chairs and sleep in the Queen's Park, you know? <laughs> so the police moved me on. I remember walking down the hill, what, for, you know, through Green Park on the way to Victoria, and I'd got about you know two hundred meters down, and I was like, oh, I really can't be bothered to move any further. And then I just lay lay under a tree in Green Park and slept there, and the police didn't move me on. But then I remember waking up about six in the morning, really cold. It was a summer's morning, but it was cold, and crossed over the road, and. Uh, Next to the Hard Rock Cafe was some steps down into like, you know, the the basement sort of area. You know, you got this strip, you know, sometimes there's, you see the, you know, there's some railings and there's basement things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I went down into the, uh, down these steps and found some cardboard boxes and I fell asleep on these, put cardboard boxes down there and then woke up about midday and there was another homeless man next to me but this is like oh. an old school tramp he cuddled up to you? no but this was like an old school tramp like back in like the early, late 80s early 90s you got real old school tramps that were covered in shit and puke and mm -hmm. stank you know they were real oh, okay. there wasn't a homeless problem like there is now you know the people that were homeless were crazy were like the the were very very ill and fucked up with oh. it but there was this old school tramp next to me on the cardboard box and then Above me, look, looking up, was a queue of people waiting to go into the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> looking down, all these children, there's me like, oh, and we got up and bunked the train home. I don't quite know what that's got to do with the streets. So, oh yeah, so anyway, but our nefarious lifestyle, I wonder if nefarious is the right word. Does that mean criminal lifestyle, naughty lifestyle? I don't know. But it was funded through crime. And we got through a lot of money, lots and lots of money every night. And we lived like extravagant kings, lording it up in the glorious streets of Soho, ho, ho. But, you know, every single day, you know, we would come in, never have any money. I'd have to bunk the bus, 73 bus, into, into Soho, pretend I was asleep on the bus. So they could, this is the old route masters, pretend I was asleep so... So the conductor couldn't hit me up for money. I'd just be like, I refused to open my eyes, so he'd leave me alone. We never had any money, never had any fags yet. By six o'clock that evening, because of our dodgy dealings, we'd all be rich again. Like, very, like rich, man, for back in the day. Like, I'd, we'd earn our yearly wage in like two weeks through our dodgy behaviour. And, uh, yeah, so what lyrics, what are the lyrics? Monday to Friday, one massive party, hundreds of pounds a night we stole 
acid and booze, coke and sex and argument. Yeah, just partying through Soho every single night of the week. That's the streets of Soho. We, we, that's it, I think. Uh, but always, yeah, but always, you know, the next day back at work, we were poor, hungry, and we robbed the croissants to chop them out delivered. They're morning sweet. Yeah, morning sweetness, yeah. Mm. And we can never even fall, fall fags, you know, smoking fag butts as you do. This is a really long one. It's, it's it, interesting. It's 10 at night. No, it's later than that, but it's fucking 11 minutes long. Right, I'm going to go. But that's the glorious streets of Soho. It's about my time in Soho as a kid, partying very, very hard and living like kings and living like hungry, starving Oliver Twist type. <laughs> See the one that ended up in the workhouse? Yeah. It says police workhouse. Yes, yes. yeah. We were modern day Oliver Twists. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday, Bex. Thank you. Everyone can wish Bex happy birthday. Day three of season one, episode three of The History of the Songs. I am your host, Papa Emo, <laughs> and I bid you good night. You can say goodnight to all the bags. Good night. Good night, night, everyone. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. That was bad, wasn't it? No. Did you like it when I said don't let the bed bite? I loved it. All right, then. Bye.